Here's some salt in this beaker, some sugar in here. You know that this is ionic and this is molecular. Now we're going to make solutions out of both of these compounds and we're going to test these solutions for electrical conductivity. We're going to use this little handy dandy uh, meter which will tell us if a solution is conducting or not. When the two probe wires down here are touching together, a little light beep, 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 the sound is all me by the way, beep comes on and you're able to tell whether a solution actually has the ability to be able to send the electrical current from one electrode to the other, complete a circuit, and light up the little bulb. So, let's test them. All right, here's the sodium chloride. Here's the, oh, look at that. You put the conductivity apparatus in there, and it really does a job of showing conductivity. Now, rinse off the electrode here in the water. And, of course, you didn't see the bulb come on because water is not going to conduct. And then we put the conductivity apparatus in the sucrose, and, well, we don't get seem to get any kind of a reaction there. Rinse it off over here. Hey, let's try a little bit of vinegar, too. I just thought I'd throw that in there, and, whoa, yeah, there we go. Conductivity there in the acid, in the sodium chloride, nothing in the water, or in the sucrose solution. Let's talk. Conductivity is one type of property that solutions can have. There are other types of properties that solutions can have as well. We'll go over them right now. So, first of all, you saw in the demonstration, and I know you've got a good eye, so you're probably aware, that on, in the water and in the sucrose, there was slight conductivity. You know, if you can't get a solution properly distilled 100%, and there are some ions floating around, you're going to get conductivity. And that's a big thing right here, right now, to di differentiate between ionic and molecular solutions. So, molecular. Molecular solutions are non-electrolytes, and that means that they do not conduct an electrical current. Water, in its pure state, doesn't really conduct very well at all. And, of course, the sucrose, being a molecular compound dissolved in water, doesn't conduct very well either. Most molecular solutions are colorless in nature. When molecular compounds form solutions, they're colorless. Now, neutral ionic, that's another category of solutions. Neutral ionic, they're electrolytes. You saw that the salt in water was an electrolyte. That was a conducting solution, and it's also a neutral ionic in that its pH is 7. Anytime you have ions like chloride, iodide, bromide uh, in solution or nitrate ion, they are going to give you solutions that when bonded to a cation, that's a, a positive charged ion like a group 1A or 2A element, you're going to get yourself a neutral compound with a pH of 7, but ionic in that it conducts. Then, other types of solutions would be things like acids. Acids are electrolytes as well. You saw that the acetic acid conducted. Now, acetic acid wouldn't actually conduct as well as, say, sulfuric acid, perchloric acid, nitric acid, hydroiodic acid, hydrobromic acid, or hydrochloric acid. Those are the six strong acids, and they are strong electrolytes. But the acetic acid that you saw was not a strong electrolyte, although it, it, it lit up pretty well. So acids, however, do all have a pH that's less than 7, and they're all electrolytes, but some are strong and some are weak electrolytes. The strong electrolytes are strong acids. The weak electrolytes are called weak acids. And then you've got bases. Didn't give you a demonstration of a base, but bases have a pH that's greater than 7, and they're electrolytes too. So you know, the one diagnostic characteristic, a feature that totally describes molecular solutions, is that they don't conduct. If you put a conductivity apparatus into a solution and it doesn't conduct, it's molecular. Everything else will conduct, and it'll either be neutral ionic, an acid, or a base.